football wasn't a sport that all the elite kids played. Just a special group of kids that year that bought into what we were doing. Started off and shared a school in Amherstburg. Great group of coaches with Mike Wilson, Brett Thompson, Tim Matry, uh, myself, to, um, you know, that, that I think were very good football guys. Brett was here one year and he did an exceptional job. We were very excited about getting him here and, and I think he brought a different element of surprise to the way Villanova played football and I think that helped tremendously in regards to winning the championship. Tim Matry, probably the head coach here for 10 years. Mike just wanted to coach. He was here every day, wanted to help out, so we brought him on and he ran our offensive and he helped with the defensive line as well and, and he had an opportunity to coach his kids as well. Eric was a, was probably, believe it or not, probably the most talented out of the three young men. He was a very, very gifted uh, running back. He was an outstanding defensive back. Um, just a true, natural football player. Greg, completely different. Very large, big, big kid, you know, 6'2", 265, 270 pounds, and, and a good athlete at that size. Um, you know, had a, had a tremendous mean streak and just liked to rough people up. Luke, I remember Luke when he first got here in grade uh, in grade nine, and I mean, he was a foot taller than every kid in the school. Um, you know, you would see him down the hallway and you might be like, my God, who is that kid? He came here, I think he played junior football in grade nine, and then he moved right into senior in grade 10 because he was that, that gifted. I think coaching-wise, we knew we had something special. I don't know the kids really realized at first the type of athletes and the type of, uh, you know, uh, play that these three young men were going to bring to our football program. But, uh, you know, I, as I said, the coaches definitely knew there was something special and, uh, you know, we were excited about the year. I wouldn't say we had an explosive offense, so we weren't a team that was going to blow people out by, you know, scoring fast, but we... We wore them down. We started out with that mentality as we're just going to keep running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. We might not score early. We might not score, you know, as often as we like. But the problem is we sit there and, and we just keep pounding on them, leaning on them, leaning on them. We know eventually it's going to give because we just had that will. Those kids had the will and they wouldn't, they would not be stopped. And eventually that's what every game ended up being. It would be, you know, grind till the third, fourth quarter and then it was over. We just started hammer, pounding people. Hammer them, hammer, hammer them. Yeah. yeah. And, eventually and, okay, and I think man. it was, wasn't it a newspaper article that said we're, that we were like a sledgehammer and eventually, eventually, it, you will break by getting hit by the sledgehammer, yeah, right? Exactly. Whether it's the first quarter or the fourth one or whatever, eventually it's going to happen. And yeah. yeah, the theory was that uh, if you kept hitting something with a sledgehammer, eventually it's going to break. <laughs> well, that was kind of the theory, right? That we just keep whacking and hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting and eventually there were games, and we talked about it out before the before we came in here, where you know, you'd see players on the other team, and they would fear, they would fade away from the tackle. They'd be in a position to make a tackle, and it'd be like, oh, I can't get hit again. When there were three or four guys down on Brendan on the field at the same time, injured, yeah. you come off, the ambulance shows up, they load yeah. these three guys in the ambulance, off they go, the game starts up again, the next play, another guy's down. We're off the field, and they were all clean hits. It wasn't like we were, we, we weren't a cheap we team dirty, by any means. No, we weren't a dirty team. They were clean hits. And I remember, like, their some coach. Us, some of us, we had a couple of dirty guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, their, their, their coach came over and was like, listen, like, stop, like, stop, please. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's done. Okay, we're like, just refs, let the, let the clock run. Clock like, we're, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. like, it's, please, please do don't do this anymore. Oh, yeah, the, to the, to Art, like, Matry and, and uh, Coach Matry and Thompson and my dad or whatever, they're like, I don't know what's going on, but you need to stop because everyone's getting hurt. I remember looking over to the sideline, and there were, like, guys lying on the sideline oh, with, like, with, like, like blankets over them and stuff and like and we were still just like just jam it down their throats like there was a tipster that was uh, that was done by somebody else and then I kind of took it upon myself to be a kind of a voice of, of hearing because again the kids they didn't need much motivation but all they just needed was that little extra push so we did a little bit you know every <laughs> once in a while we'd throw one out I'd hear something someone would say something to me and I would literally just regurgitate it and put it out there for everyone to read it so you were the tipster no I wasn't the tipster I was chirp I was the one that would just I was okay. tipster was picking us to lose yeah. but I I think we know we, who the, we, knew, who we the knew the tipster was, was. right uh, but I just kind of we had uh, kind of helping the helping the tipster along a little bit yeah. so he did us a lot of favors we all decided that that was gonna be our, our, style. our style that we were gonna be the toughest you know Meanest, yeah. yeah, meanest, you know, bunch of bunch of guys around, like around. You know what I mean? That we weren't, we weren't gonna, we weren't gonna burn by you. We weren't gonna make all these finesse catches or like out juke anybody or you know we weren't, we weren't gonna be that team. We were gonna be the team that was gonna line up and go. We're running right over you, yeah. and I dare you to try and stop it. And we had a good offensive line, and our defense was really strong. Our linebackers were tough. 
everybody, you know, everybody bought in. They were all very physical and we're all, all bought in, I would say. Well, and again, it's, it's always nice to have a team when your best players are the hardest workers too. And that was a thing we had. Our best players were the hardest working guys on our team. So everyone fed off that. Was that 2006 year, we really just changed the game from 12 on 12, at least on offense, to four on four, where Luke, you would play next to me, and then we just have Eric run between us. So it's, yeah. instead of like yeah. spreading the ball, yeah. Eric would carry the ball and, like 40 times a game. Yeah, we used and to. 90 percent of them were right behind. Yeah, the guy, we used so. we used to joke, right, that like there'd be guys on the other team where they'd be like Greg said, it'd be Greg, Luke, and then me lined up behind them, and the guy would be like. They're coming right here, they're coming right here, they're coming right here. And like, nobody on our, we, we never said anything. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And we would just, yeah, yeah. yeah. we just. These guys are being modest. I didn't really do anything offensively. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was all right defensively, but it was pretty much the Eric and Greg Wilson show. I always thought it was kind of cool that they were all different players. Like, mm -hmm. you would think three brothers would all be, they're all different body types, different positions. So we were able to kind of. Yeah. cover a lot of ground if if you will I mean it wouldn't have been like I don't think to have two Eric's would have I mean wouldn't have been like the same I would put Eric's high school career up against anyone ever oh, yeah. in Wexa no I mean who has five Wexa touchdowns in the championship game like know. it's a joke and he's playing safety yeah. I've talked to coach Lumley about that he goes you know my all my time playing of coaching, you know, Coach Lemmy, the Herman guy, he said there's been two guys that has given us a problem where I, I couldn't stop it. He said, and Eric was the first guy ever, he said that he's ever had like coaching another guy where he's like, I don't know like oh, how I'm supposed to stop this guy. Like we're doing all the right things. Right. It's just not working. Yeah. In fact, my words to Eric were at the last, before the championship game, I said, Eric, put him on your shoulders, carry him. And he did in the fourth quarter. Coach Major yeah. said, if we are only down by seven points come, like, the fourth quarter, we will win the game, no problem. Yeah. But that was, for me, being like, a, these guys are older. I was only, you know, grade 11. I was, like, not nervous, but at that point, we really hadn't had a close game all year. No, The no. first game of the year against Sandwich was close. But then after that, yeah. like, I don't think we ever had a lot. We were ever really. losing. We had maybe no. one time against Calgary Central where we were only up three or four. Yeah. And yeah. we blew them out in the second half. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was like, shoot, like, we're in a ball game. Last yeah, two minutes, yeah. what happened? Yeah. Well, I mean, we... The sledgehammer came out. <laughs> we were down 21-14. I, I said, kids, don't worry. We're going to win this game. Our guys really wanted that game. Yeah. Every single kid on that team was was all in. When we were down four points, I thought, oh, this is perfect. Yeah. No problem. I'm like, yeah. Well, I remember what happened. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've watched that film a bunch, but... Uh, we decided to run a screen, which we yeah. very rarely Salute, ran. Right? No, no this, this, this is the last one, Eric. Oh, and right. uh, Pascal, on the right side of the line, went offside, remember? Right. And so they backed us up. Right. And then we, ran, we ran the same play. And uh, I ran, I think, like, it must have been 40 yards, probably. Yeah. 40 yards, untouched. And then uh, and then the next play, um, the next play, we, uh, yeah, I, I ended up scoring. It was an off tackle through, through you or whatever. I scored. <laughs> and I remember. Uh, that put us in the lead, and I remember everybody was jumping on me, and I was so tired from running two plays that far back to back that I thought, like, I was lying on the ground, like, hey, guys, get off here again. <laughs> I'm dying down here or whatever. We scored three touchdowns in, what, a minute and a half or two whatever it was. Left, yeah. like, and again, it was just running the ball. We were trying to run the clock out, and we just kept, Eric kept breaking the damn thing because they no one to touch him. They started pushing the ball. Like, it looked like they were getting pretty close to scoring again. Like, I think I was lined up in the end zone for one of the last plays. Right. Yeah. And we uh, 17, though. Yeah, we were, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and I remember thinking, like, I really don't want these guys to score or whatever. And I remember, like, line, trying to line up um, for the play. I'm like, why, what's going on? Why are these guys not, like, lining up or whatever? And then the ref blew the, yeah. started spinning the flag or whatever. And I looked out and I saw the crowd rushing, rushing in. in. I'm like, that was crazy. we just won, right? Yeah. And like, off we went or whatever. I, did, I wasn't watching the clock or nothing. So it was just, guys, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I was kind of still in the zone. Yeah, the happening. fans rushed in and it was pretty surreal, really. I remember just standing back and watching it. I wasn't yeah. really, I just too. want to stand and watch because to see the kids and just, again, seeing that whole, all the, you know, all the students come in and, and yeah. just seeing how happy they were. And you know that was the for me. I just stand back and just watch it. It was a, it was a good feeling. Yeah, it sure was. Oh, you got to realize oh, that was the school's ch first championship in football. They could be 20 years down the road. They'll remember this game. They'll remember this championship team and the fun we had. By far the best championship I've ever won. I'm never wrong. Winning Super Bowl was a dream come true. 
Bears confetti were in brand new city, it's our stadium in New Jersey. You know, hundreds of thousands of people, or millions watching, 50 or 70 there. And my mom and dad were on the field. These guys were in the stands. Like, yeah, it was great. That was cool yeah. And, but there's something about, as far as like that like feeling you get from winning a championship, you know, you have a group of guys that you went to high school. There's no money being made at Villanova's yeah, high school exactly. football team. Yeah. I told somebody that sometimes I feel like part of the reason I played football was to try and chase that feeling again, you know? So, uh, by far, the that was, or to date, the greatest sports moment I've had in my life was by far that high school championship. Anytime you win a championship, it's very, very special um, with those group of guys, with those group of coaches, and things like that. And it's something that nobody can ever take away from you. And I think sometimes people forget that. Um, regardless of the good times or bad times, that's something that they accomplish as, you know, 35 kids. Very, very important and very special.